Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jamie Fenn. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I do DaVinci Resolve tutorials, visual effects, breakdowns, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to do a sky replacement tutorial in Fusion. Now, you've probably seen a lot of tutorials online where you just see a simple Luma key or, you know, something that's kind of basic. But in today's tutorial, I'm gonna include some motion tracking and that's what's gonna tie everything together. So go ahead and download DaVinci Resolve if you haven't yet and follow along. We're basically going to create a composite of a few images and you want to have your first clip that is going to be your foreground and you want to make sure that is color corrected, everything's ready to go. You want to make sure you have a background. Now, I'm going to just select this photo for the time being, but you can choose a video, you can do a time lapse, you can get creative with it. But just for this example, I'm going to keep it basic. And then I'm also going to include a moon. I'm going to make sure all these are activated and they're on top of each other and they are also equally the same in length. And then I'm going to click down command and select all three right click and create a new fusion clip because we are going to do this in fusion. Once you have done that, select the clip and click on fusion. And what this is going to do is, is it's gonna automatically layer these like so. But let's get organized and I'm gonna show you how I go about doing this. So I'm gonna get rid of this merge node. I'm gonna bring this over here and I'm gonna select this node and push one to put it up in my viewer number one and this is viewer number two. If I want to see what this is in viewer number two, I would select it in select two. But for the time being, I'm just going to work with this viewer and I want to rename each one of these. So I stay organized on a Mac. I'm going to hold down FN and push the brightness button on the keyboard to rename it or it's F2. I'm going to select it and put desert because that's the desert shot. That's the moon. I'm going to rename this moon. And then I'm going to rename this because I know this is clouds. Okay. In case you haven't been here before, you have merge nodes, which basically combine layers. And if you hover your mouse over the arrows, the yellow is always background and the green is always foreground. So I want the clouds to be the background and I want the desert shot to be in the front of those clouds. So that would be the foreground. Now I'm gonna select the merge node and push two. So now this is showing the desert on top of the clouds. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add a Luma keyer. You can drag these windows to adjust. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my desert node and hold down shift and push spacebar, type in Luma keyer. By default, that's what happens, but you wanna come over here and click invert and drag these low and high sliders up and down and it depends on your video but to the point where it looks like the sky is being replaced, you don't wanna to go too high or too low or else it will cut into the video. So find the perfect medium. Sometimes it takes a little bit of adjusting. You can also really zoom in pretty far and even add a little bit of blur to the edges. Just the tiniest amount sometimes works really well. And now we have a desert shot on top of a cloud picture. But now the problem is, is that it's basically just a floating picture. And so what we're gonna have to do now is implement some motion tracking data. And so this is what is gonna set you apart from other scenes where you've seen some sky replacement on the internet. And this is gonna really add to the final look of everything that you do in this composite. Select your desert node, hold down shift, push spacebar, type in planner, tracker, push enter and it will automatically drop that node in between these two nodes. If you didn't know this, you can actually hold down shift and just drag that on top of that line. And when you see the line change color, it will actually automatically connect those nodes to the appropriate node that you dropped down. I'm going to start at the very beginning of this clip and I'm going to select this amount of data here in this range, I want, I want to avoid Julia in the frame. And I'm going to select that range. 
I'm going to select the translation rotation scale, and I'm going to set the frame reference the reference frame to the first frame of this whole composite. And then I'm going to click this arrow, which tracks everything to the right of that set reference frame. And what this is going to do is it's going to track as best as it can what I've selected in that window. And hopefully get some good tracking data. Perfect. OK. Now I'm going to select create planner transform and that's going to create a node with that data and so now anytime you add anything or you want to mimic the motion of the original clip that you're trying to make the composite on which in this case is the desert clip you can attach the motion of what you've tracked to those layers and it will actually match up perfectly remember how the clouds are basically just floating there well, now if you click on Planner Transform, hold down Shift, drag it on top of that line, connect it, it will now be connected to the foreground. But now, as you can see there, we have a problem. And that problem is that it doesn't actually fill the screen and you see some black here. So what we can do is go to the beginning again, click on Clouds, hold down Shift, Spacebar, and type in Transform. And you can adjust the size of the clouds photo to your liking. I like to start with the aspect. I like to kind of squeeze it because when you look up into the sky, you don't see like a flat image. You kind of see something that has some depth, something that's a little bit more squashed rather than just like a flat picture of the sky straight up. Then I'm going to also enlarge this. And hopefully I'm going to play it through the whole range of this clip and hopefully it covers the, the background enough to the point where you don't see any black and it looks good, perfect. So now we have a sky replacement. So now if you want to, you can start adding things like a moon or a shooting star or a spaceship or whatever you wanna do. If you wanna do that, you can click on this icon right here, which is a merge tool, and you can drag that down, hold shift and drag that down in between this merge node and the media out. And you wanna make sure that this is connected to the background and that the moon is gonna be on the foreground. So now that you've attached the moon to the foreground, you want to do a Luma key. And then also you can click on moon and type in transform and you can drag and make it smaller or bigger. You can place it in your scene wherever you want. In this case, maybe I'll just put it like right here. And here's the problem though, right? So if the moon's just sitting there, it's just going to be stationary and it's not going to actually look like it fits in the scene. You can actually just copy and paste some of that data that you created from that planner tracker. Copy and paste that node and then bring it into the node flow of the moon. Bring that planner transform node down here and make sure that it's connected properly. And what we can do is view our final composite. And I'm going to let this render. So now you have the final composite. And this is kind of what you get. And it looks pretty cool. You can see there's still some black here. I can go back and change it. But that's basically the idea of it all. And the last thing you can do also is just basically do some color correction and kind of tie everything together. I just threw a lot on. But if you wanna do some basic color correction, you can actually go into each one of these layers here or node flows, I would say. I, each layer, I'm basically just saying like the, the cloud layer, the desert layer, the moon layer. You can actually come in here and select a node and depending on where you wanna put it, you can type in color and type in a color corrector. And you can do some color correction and try to fit the composite better together with color. So as you can see, you can select each layer and you know maybe I want to make it a little bit more contrasty, give it some some mood, maybe do a little bit of the um maybe lift it up a little bit because the sky's kind of bright. Also, if I want to, I could go to the clouds, type in color corrector, maybe bring down the gain a little bit. 
you know, you can kind of play with it like that and get your final look. If you want to kind of fit the composite together more accurately with color, you're going to have to actually individually grade each clip and prepare the photo or video for the specific scene that you're trying to match. So in my case, it's this desert scene here. And if I wanted to, I could change the sky a little bit, you know, change the, the color of the desert. So I hope you enjoyed all of this. If you like these kinds of videos, please like and subscribe. I love doing this kind of stuff. I'm going to try to do some live streams. Catch me there if you need to or if you can. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. We'll